With the advent of Season 23, I'll get you in the know for the best heroes and comps for roll queue and open queue. Instead of just giving you random tips and explaining why this hero is the best in Season 23 or whatever, I'm going to give you specific tips to actually climb with each and every hero so that you can actually grind SR. My name is Nate and welcome to Blizzard Guides. Now a few things before we get started, first off this video will have 7 heroes for roll queue and then a general section for open queue. I'll explain a little bit about what comps are going to be expected in the open queue and what might be best. And then for the roll queue 7 heroes, the heroes are actually in order this time, so the further down the list you get, the stronger and more easy the heroes are to pick up in this particular meta. So that's how that will work. And then also just a quick and really big grateful thing. Thank you for 200,000 subs. I cannot believe it. I, I really, it still hasn't hit me. It doesn't feel very real, but I'm so excited and I cannot thank you guys enough for supporting the channel. But with that said, let's get into this list. Coming in at number seven, let's talk about McCree. Now, originally I was gonna put Ash, but Ash is not as self-reliant as you might think, especially in lower ranks. She just needs a lot of healing and that's not really viable sometimes, especially down in like plat and gold and, and below, uh, you just don't get healed. So that's why McCree is here at number seven. So when you play McCree in season 23, the most important thing is that you burst down people that are getting healed by Brigida. Her repair packs and her passive inspiring healing is just stupidly strong so if you can constantly just shoot the people that do actually get repair packed you'll kind of mitigate the damage or mitigate the effect of a Brigida in the team and so that's why you need to protect your supports from flankers that do get those repair packs or do get those passive inspired healing play around them and just keep them safe and then on top of that if you're having trouble actually engaging into the fight and getting past the enemy team tanks you can use your flashbang to allow your team to break through tank lines which is very, very strong. You just throw your flashbang at the enemy tank, hit two headshots, and you're good to go. And then also, finally, you just need to use your high noon to counter rushes from rallying brigs or just ulting sigmas or something like that. High noon is a really useful zoning tool to mitigate the effects of a sigma ult or a rally, so use it as such, and you'll have a good time. Coming in at number six, let's talk about Reinhardt. Reinhardt is just a classic pick. There's not much other to say other than the fact that you do need to change your playstyle slightly when it comes to season 23. It's very important that you tempo slam instead of just going for big five to six man shatters. It's actually a lot better to just go for two to three man shatters and try and get those kills just because enemies don't stay knocked down as long as they used to a few patches ago. And I don't think most Reinhardts have adapted in ranks below diamond so don't be afraid to just go for smaller slams now so that you can actually pick up the kills and then also you just need to be flexible when you play in season 23 because resources can be kind of flaky when it comes to healing and damage just because people really haven't figured it out that well so just be flexible if you're playing aggro and it just doesn't work and you keep dying or your team isn't doing enough damage dial it back a bit play a bit more passive and if things just still don't work there might be an issue with your team or your playstyle or something like that Coming in at number five, I have a bit of an unorthodox hero. It's actually two. I'm going to put Orisa and Sigma into just one hero. And the reason I'm doing this is because the Orisa-Sigma combo is better than Reinhardt Zarya right now in this current meta, but it is very difficult to execute in solo queue. And so I actually recommend that if you have somebody else that plays tank, duo Orisa-Sigma and you'll climb like 500 SR if you actually really try and grind. It's really easy to pick up and just having a constant Orisa Sigma pairing is stupidly strong. But I still do have tips for Sigma and Orisa. So for Sigma, use your rock to counter divers and flankers. Brigitte is going to be able to bail those people out so if they do get a repair pack you can just throw a rock at them and then they'll likely back up mitigating the effects of the repair pack. And then also on top of that you can use your shield to block line of sight of any healing. You can block Lucio Amp, Brigitte Inspire, um, uh, Anna's shots, stuff like that. So just 
be cognizant of that and put your shield in between healers and the people they're trying to heal and you'll be a very very strong sigma and then also just use your ultimate as a defensive ult if a genji nano blades and goes for your supports you can use your ult to ult him but just be confident about it and make sure that you're actually going to get the genji in it you wouldn't want to just waste your ult Oh, she died, she died, she died, she died, she died, she died. <laughs> Let's get it, gravy. Let's get it. Then for Orisa, much like with Sigma's rock, you need to save your halt for flankers. It's the same reasoning as Sigma, so I'm not going to go too in-depth with that. But also, shield uptime is super important on Orisa in Season 23. You must have your shield up as much as possible, so don't replace a shield that's full HP. Don't put a shield down if your Sigma already has shield up. Make sure that you have as much shield uptime as possible and are constantly shielding damage. Coming in at number 4, let's talk Zarya. For Zarya in Season 23, you just need to focus on having high energy all the time. And just focus on staying alive as well. Don't play too aggro, you need to worry a bit more about uptime than just trying to get in and get a kill or two. Your job is really just to be the glue and kind of an anchor for your team in the fight. So prepare your bubbles to counter ultimates from the enemy team. So for example, like if a Genji dashes your Ana and you bubble your Ana, then the Genji can't get his dash reset and it wastes seconds on a six second blade which is a big deal and then also you can use your graviton surge to also defend against nano blade which is stupidly important in season 23 and that's actually why zarya is above orisa sigma in this list because using grav as a defensive ult is better than sigma's flux just because it's a little bit easier to aim and then finally just use your projected barrier to allow your teammates to go for stupid plays or to bail them out of stupid plays Sometimes, and especially in ranks like Platinum, Gold, and I might want to include Silver sometimes, players will go for what seems like a stupid play, but if they did actually get support, they probably would get a really good play. So don't be afraid to bubble people that seem to keep going for stupid plays. Now, obviously if it doesn't work anymore, then stop wasting your bubbles, but give your team some leniency and allow your projected barrier to allow your teammates to go do the things that they want to do, and you'll have a better time in general. Coming in at number 3, Anna. Now, for Anna in Season 23, much like with every season, positioning is everything. More uptime and more staying alive it means you can miss more shots, so if your aim isn't that great, but you're alive all the time, you can miss more shots, and obviously it's not ideal that you miss shots, but it's better in general. Also, on top of that, most players overlook cooldown management. You need to be very, very careful when you use sleep and nade, and not to waste those abilities because they're so important. And also, like, if you're getting dove by a Genji and you're not getting help, having sleep dart and having nade as tools to ward him away helps a lot, even if you don't use them to kill him. And then finally for season 23 specifically, hold your nano for Genji. Don't nano your Reinhardt just because he's low and you think that the fight may be winnable. D just uh, save your nano for the Genji. Genji nano blade is a free win each and every time. So if you're not using a free win, I don't know what you're doing on Ana. Just save your nanos, be patient, and be patient when you shoot shots. Just be patient when you play Ana and wait for the good things that you can do, like nanoblading, and you'll win really quickly. Coming in at number two, I mean, I, the way I've been talking about Brigida, you would have expected her to be on this list, and she is on this list. Brigida, I mean, she's good right now. There's nothing else to say. She's really easy to pick up right now, so I'm not going to have too many tips for her. You, you literally just play her. She kind of plays herself. Uh, but, but I will say, you do need to make sure that you make your flankers invincible by giving them repair packs when they're going in. It's such a insanely strong ability because you really just need to press E or whatever it is on console and then you're done. You don't need to pay attention to them that much more and you're good to go. And then also on top of that, Inspire uptime is super important. So Inspire is the ability that allows you to heal your teammates in general. So when you deal damage, it heals your teammates. You need to be dealing damage as constantly as possible 
every single second that you can because the more inspires up the more healing you're doing so for example if you just don't have inspire up right now because you didn't hit somebody with your left click or your primary fire or whatever you want to call it you can use your flail to generate a little bit of inspire healing which actually goes a long way if you're grouped up with your team and then also make sure that you use your rally when you're not sure if you're winning the fight but the fight might be winnable might be losable it's a really good tool for flipping fights that are just generally undecisive because it's not that high of an investment ultimate and it's also really good for engaging so you could do that as well and finally last but not least at number one we have genji i mean you saw this one coming nanoblade is so strong right now it's a free win just to use it Patience is really everything when it comes to nanoblading. You need to make sure that you land the combo every single time. You cannot dash in and not get the kill. Once you dash in and do not get the kill, it's basically over for your nanoblade. So if the enemy has a boop that they could be using on you or a stun, be aware of it. If you're going to dive to Lucio, make sure that you don't invest your dash until he's trying to boop you away. You it's just better off to go for the slash get booped dash in and go for a second slash than it is to dash in get booped and then not land a slash at all patience is really important when it comes to genji's nanoblade and then also on top of that you can dash towards azaria and then hold deflect and you'll usually actually catch a grab if you're in a rank below diamond so it's really easy to do this you literally dash at the Zarya and hold deflect and and i recommend you try this a little bit and you'll find some success same thing goes for anna sleep darts and other abilities like that and then finally when you're playing genji regularly and not using blade just build damage all you need to do is focus on building a blade when you're playing genji outside of using blade play for blade blade is the most important thing nano blade is just so strong i cannot stress it enough which is why i'm gonna keep saying nano blade <laughs> Just build your damage and learn the combos so that you can build more damage. So dash, right click, melee combos, you know, right click melee, right click deflect, uh, right click dash. I mean, there's so many combos with Genji, they kind of just make themselves. Watch Genji players play Genji and copy their combos and you'll do fine. Now let's switch gears a bit and talk about OpenQ. Now because OpenQ is just so new and we haven't really played any OpenQ style competitive game mode since RollQ became a thing like almost a year ago now or something like that, it's going to be a bit hypothetical but I mean let's be honest, GOATS is probably making a return. Brigitta is so strong right now, I don't see how GOATS could not be a thing but let's say GOATS isn't your kind of thing, you don't enjoy playing triple tank triple support you can also run ball triple dps and a mercy lucio or something similar to that a comp that is fast paced and high damage this also worked really well before roll q was a thing and this is what a lot of people ran whenever you had three dps players which was pretty common so i also recommend that comp i think we'll see a lot of heroes like echo tracer genji soldier make a comeback and maybe a little bit of doom as well i don't think hit scans are going to be quite as popular in open queue just because they don't have the reliance of two tanks with them at all times because i feel like a lot of open queue players are going to lean towards wackier comps since roll queue provides just constant 222 so be on the lookout for goats triple dps with a wrecking ball or also just heroes like echo soldier tracer genji and maybe a little bit of doom and i think you'll do fine but anyway, that's it for today's video. Thanks again for 200,000 subscribers. I really, I cannot believe it. It's so crazy that I even reached this point. I honestly never saw it getting this far. I, I mean, I wanted it to, but I never realized it really could. So thanks again for your support, guys. Really, I do mean it a lot. I, I love making videos, even though I have been getting lazy about it. And I plan on really aggressively making videos so that you guys can enjoy the content. Because really, I do love making making the videos so thanks again for your support really i i don't know what else to say other than thanks a ton so i i hope you guys enjoyed this video please let me know if you did actually like it if you didn't as well please dm me on discord tell me what you didn't like so i can make these videos better i only want to improve also you can follow us on instagram and twitter and actually join the discord from the links in the description down below so be sure to check those out but anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this one have a nice day my name is nate and this was blizzard guides